Cannibalism is taboo. To eat human flesh is something that humans should not be allowed to do. However, there are a few who get a taste for it. Even worse, they torture and kill those they eat. Patricia Martinez, half of the Monsters of Ecatepec duo, committed heinous cracks towards other women. She, alongside with her husband, are accused of murdering over 20 women in Mexico. What would cause someone to torture, kill, and eat their victims? We will see in today's episode. Ecatepec is the home of two million people, and it's one of the most dangerous cities in Mexico. A study conducted by Mexico's National Institute of Statistical and Geographical Information found that 96.3% of residents live in fear. This is a city that disappearances and murders are an everyday way of life. In 2016, Pope Francis visited Ecatepec to bring awareness to the massive amount of femicide, which is a killing of a woman or girl that occurs in the city. I wanted to give you an understanding of the place that Patricia Martinez and her husband Juan Carlos Hernandez committed their crimes for you to understand that this is a place where people are wary of their neighbors. And Patricia was still able to lure these poor women and girls to their deaths. Patricia was a prostitute before she met Juan Carlos. Her mental state was thought to be intellectually challenged. There were also claims that as a child, Patricia was very manipulative. In 2008, the murderous couple met. Patricia was a waitress at the restaurant that Juan Carlos frequented. Even though she believed him to be an assassin, she still started a relationship with him. They would eventually get married and have four children. And they would start the business of selling costume jewelry and clothing, which was one of the ways that they lured the women and girls. The murders began in 2012. One of their victims was their 13-year-old neighbor, Luz del Carmen, who was also the daughter of their friend. Patricia noticed she was alone, and so she went up to the girl and said she needed to borrow her phone. Luz gave her the phone, and Patricia never returned. The girl went to their house to get her phone back, when she went inside, she was never seen again. Later, Juan Carlos said that he tried to rape her, but because she was on her menstrual cycle, he instead forced her to perform oral sex on him. The poor girl threw up, and after that, he killed her. This is all while Patricia watched. They made cuts on her legs and ate the cuts of meat later. Luz was one of their first victims. Patricia also lured single mother Nancy Noemi Utron, who left her two older daughters at home and took the baby girl with her to look at supposed baby clothes. They killed her and sold the baby. They would also kill two more single moms. They also killed a mother and her 10-year-old daughter. From Patricia's testimony, she talks about the murder 
of 22-year-old Fabiola Lucon Reyes. Her husband posted a sign that he needed a girl to help his wife around the house. And unfortunately, Fabiola responded. When she got to the house, she was a bit nervous when she saw there was no furniture. However, Juan Carlos said the dirty clothes were in the bathroom. When Fabiola went in and had her back facing the door, Juan Carlos came in after her and locked it. When he opened it back up, Fabiola was dead. Patricia says that he cut four pieces of meat and she made roast beef. They ate it for the rest of the week. The monsters of Ekatakpek would also take their victims' hearts and put them in glass jars to honor their god. In January 2019, the heart of a child was found in the couple's home. The authorities are still trying to figure out who the child is. They would also sell the bones of their victims. During their trial, they said the bones of the women and girls were sold to a santero. A santero is a practitioner of santeria, which if you don't know is very similar to voodoo. The police are still trying to find that person or persons. For the parts that couldn't be eaten, they would feed it to their dogs. 20 women and girls were killed and suffered this horrible fate. On one of the last posts Patricia posted on Facebook, it was a picture of Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn with the caption, I am crazy. Another was an image of La Santa Muerte or Holy Death with the words, you that know everything, mother of mine, I beg you to not abandon me. On October 4th, 2018, the couple was crossing the street with Patricia pushing a stroller. When the police caught up to them, they realized that there was no baby but bags full of body parts. The police searched their home and found more body parts in seven buckets in the freezer in a room called the Black Room as well as in two other vacant homes near the couple's house. How were they found? Patricia's number was found in the cell phones of three of the female victims. She was the one who would lure these women and girls to their deaths. The couple were found guilty and were sentenced to two 40-year prison sentences as well as 30 years. However, recently a judge revoked the 30-year prison sentence due to some issues with the investigation. However, he assured everyone that they were still in jail for 80 years. Many believe that Juan Carlos Hernandez was the mastermind, and he probably was. However, for her to have participated in these crimes, Patricia Martinez is not innocent. Even though she was diagnosed of being intellectually challenged, medical experts say she knows the difference between right or wrong. However, her neighbors say that she had no mental disabilities and was a normal woman. I do worry about their children because even though their parents tried to shield them from knowing about the killings, children are smarter and more astute than adults tend to think. I just hope that future monsters of Ekatapek were not created due to the current ones. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so now. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when there is a new video. I will be posting one every week. If you haven't checked out the podcast, I try to post a new episode every Tuesday. If there's something that happens, it usually gets pushed to Wednesday, but I post one every week. Thank you, and I will see you next week.